Good morning, and as we think today on our call to worship, God and His Word are our light. And today, as I think about this from Psalm 119, if you would like to pull that up, Psalm 119, verse 105, will be our focus today in our call to worship. You know, recently I was camping in the Rocky Mountains, and as I walked several times outside, I was just amazed by the beauty of the stars as they just lit up the entire sky. I was grateful for that starlit night as I would go outside and several times, several different days, saw the beauty of those stars. You know, not only were those stars God's handiwork, which the Bible tells us about, but they were also my nightlight when I went outside that they guided me from running into ponderosas and rocks. And for that, I thank God. But you know, more than just a physical light, the Word of God and our God is our light. We, we sing songs about Jesus being the light and our salvation. And as we worship Him today and focus in on who He is, and truly the light of the world is Jesus, Today, I want us to think about Psalm 119. Would you look there, please? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I hear Paul, or not Paul, Dave, the psalmist says here in Psalm 119, 105, that uh, he and his word here, specifically his word is a lamp, a luminary to my feet, a guidance for me. And today, as I think about that, what kind of light is this? It's moral. Notice in 104, though your precepts, through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. God tells us in his word through the psalmist here that his light provides a moral guidance, shedding on light what is false and deceptive. And it keeps us from going into those false and deceptive ways. What do you do with God's light? Well, in 105 through 112, let's read those verses. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the freewill offerings of my mouth, O Lord. Teach me your judgments. My life is constantly in my hand, continually in my hand. Yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare before me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. <clears throat> Here in Psalm 106, we see one thing that we see that the psalmist says right off the bat is that <clears throat> the psalmist makes a very emphatic promise. God, I want to keep hold of your decisions. And God's light sheds, uh, sheds uh, illumination on what God has decided. How much of our life would be so much better if we, instead of trying to figure out decisions based on what we think is best for us, is thinking what is best from God's perspective by looking into the Bible, His Word. Here, as I think about that, what way should you and I shine uh, the light on God's decisions and then study God's decisions, His Word? Well, then verses 107 through 110 the second thing we see is afflictions may ensnare you. You may be trapped. So you, you need to take God's guidance. You need to take His guiding light in this. What does following God's light produce? Look in verses 111 through verse 112. A joyful satisfaction in God's Word. Look at this. He says, God, you've given me a, your testimonies have, I have taken as a heritage forever for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Not only is God's light helping keep us safe, but it brings rejoicing. It's satisfying. We know that God's word is good and that we can trust him. A joyful satisfaction in God's word reminds us how sweet God's word is. You remember back in 103, how sweet your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. You know, I think of that old song we sang recently of, I'd rather have Jesus. 
and how that George Beverly Shea shared in that song that that his word basically is sweeter than honeycomb and you and I come to God and say this is good God you're this is appealing this is right this is good stuff you know it is sweet to follow God's moral pathway and not stub your toe on the stumbling blocks of sin and temptation in this world. You know, the light of God's word keeps us from many dangers and snares and many dangers and snares we have already come. So we must be committed to love his word and living his word. You know, Alan Ross in his excellent commentary on the psalm says this john says that if we walk in the light as god is in the light then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus his son purifies us from every sin first john 1 7. you see the symbol of light throughout scripture has while it has several meanings of holiness and truth and uh, salvation the instruction to walk in the light surely includes the idea of living in obedience to the Word of God. And you and I come to the Word of God and we realize that He is our way. He is our way of illumination. And certainly, He is what is needed in a dark world <clears throat> where the wicked attempt to ruin the righteous. And this is the kind of spiritual conflict that you and I are in. We are light in the midst of darkness, and our Savior is our light, and His Word is our shining light that gives us all the guidance we need. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, our God, would you bless the worship service? Would you bless our comprehension, our reflection upon you being our light and upon your Word? Your Word truly is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Father, keep us from evil. We pray often uh, to keep us from evil and to deliver us from these temptations that come about us. And Lord, we need the light of your word. Lord, would you please help us to be fixated upon the light and undistracted from what you have given us. We love you, Lord, and may you be loved this day. Minister to each and every one of us here, and may we walk with you and delight in you and love you and your word. May you be praised in Jesus' name. Amen.